Welcome everyone, my name's Dom, and today I have something extra special for you. I, I know I'm a little late to the party on this one. I'm a big Apple guy, right? But that's not that's not a secret. But unbeknownst to most, I actually have a uh, an Android phone, a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G Ultra Max 2D 4D HD uh, blah. And, well, with the recent release of the Galaxy Note 20, I thought it was time to give the Note 10 a complete review, and especially coming from the perspective of a long-time iOS user. So, let's get into it. So this is my Galaxy Note 10. Yeah, I got this uh, this phone shortly after it released in 2019, and I use it as a daily driver work phone. So a long time ago, I used to work for a company. They provided us with, uh, with uh, cell phone numbers, and I didn't want to get rid of my personal phone, so I used it as a secondary phone, and I love using a second phone for work. Uh, I, I find it's really nice to know, you know, if this phone goes off, this is for, you know, personal stuff. And if this phone goes off, this is for work, right? And it helps, you know, it helps keep me organized. I know that's not the best for some, but it works for me. And I found that the, the Galaxy Note 10, well, <laughs> the main thing that really attracted me to the phone, because initially I was gonna get a second iPhone, but the main thing that really attracted me to the phone was, oh, that color, that color. So I, I believe this color uh, is called Aura Glow, right? And it has this cool rainbow holographic effect. It really reminds me of like old school Pokemon cards. I don't I don't know if modern day Pokemon cards or, or Yu-Gi-Oh cards that the, the holographic cards, it's got that that shimmer, that shine. And I just love the fact that it's different and it's just not the, the typical colors that we've been getting from smartphones, blues, blacks, grays. And I honestly, I knew I wanted to start this YouTube thing. And so I wanted to try something different and get some exposure to some different stuff. And you know, starting off with the look of the phone, right? The phone is, it's beautiful. Uh, it has such a wonderful design. This is probably one of my most uh, favorite designed smartphones that I have seen in a very, very, very long time. And considering what the Galaxy Note 20 looks like with that huge camera bump and the copper color isn't really copper, it's more like a rose gold, pink, rustic kind of thing. You know, I, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but this phone, I really, really love. I love the shape. I love the the heart, you know, the the corners. I love the rounded, tapered edges. Uh, the camera bump is small. It's it's almost non-existent. I think everything about this phone visually is wonderful. The screen is one of the best screens that I have seen on a smartphone. While the phone is big, right? It is a huge, huge phone. I, I can say that between the color correction and the lighting, it, it gets so bright. It's a wonderful, wonderful display. The punch hole up here at the top of the phone uh, is not as intrusive as other YouTubers have said. To be honest with you, I don't know what other YouTubers are talking about when they do a review of this phone or the iPhone notches and punch holes. I've never known them to get in the way of my content and I don't know anyone else who's really like truly been bothered by the, the, the stuff in the way of the display. Getting more into the screen, um, it has the always on display. You could see your clock, you could see notifications and stuff like that when the screen is off. It has an in-screen fingerprint sensor, which is awesome. Since iPhone got rid of Touch ID, uh, it's just been nice to have that feature. I use it way more, I miss it way more than I thought I would. So Apple, please, please throw that back into the iPhone. Seriously, like if Samsung's doing it, like you guys, you guys know you can do it. But getting back to this phone, it does have like facial recognition and stuff and it doesn't work too well in the dark. It doesn't have um, that point mapping stuff that Face ID has, but that's okay. Uh, I really don't need it all that often. Uh, I, I just use the, the thumbprint, right? So, you know, getting into the phone, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's Android, right? Uh, I, I don't wanna get too much into an Android review per se, but what I do really want to talk about is, um, you know, the more I use Android, the more I find that I really truly think that Android shines when you use Android, especially in a caliber device like the Note 10 as a secondary work phone or just as a work phone in general. Or if you do a lot of work, you know, you're just a, you know, you work 18 hour days, whatever. Android, I think, is probably a better work phone than the iPhone just because of the one thing that Android does really, really well customization, right? You can set up your widgets, you can get apps of all kinds, you could download third-party apps without having to go to the App Store or the, the Google Play Store, as it would be called, 
it's 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 great. I'm able to specifically customize my notifications and everything in ways that I traditionally couldn't on an iPhone. And while things like iOS 14 has made that easier, it's it's just still not quite the same. Android is just really good at doing this kind of work. But all that being said, there are two things that really bother me with this phone. And I think the Android phone experience as a whole, because this is apparently not the only phone that has this problem. Number one, there are Samsung versions of apps pre-installed on the phone. And that would be fine, except I don't wanna use the Samsung apps. I wanna use the Google apps, but I can't uninstall the Samsung apps. So now I have two versions of the same app. And if you're an app like, you know, lunatic like me, I, I like the fewest number of apps that allow me to do the things that I needed to do on my phone and just having two iterations of the same app that do the same thing, two email apps, two, two web browsers, two app stores, it drives me nuts. But I would say all in all that that's not what really kills the, the experience for me. There is another big looming problem with Samsung products and I'm noticing it more and more and it's starting to go into not just this phone, but into Samsung's TVs. Hell, even Windows 10 has this problem and I didn't notice it until I got this phone. And that is that the Samsung apps have ads, right? This phone is over a thousand dollars. It automatically, at least as far as I'm concerned, goes into the luxury category. And a luxury item should not have ads in the middle of the content of a device that I just paid for. It'd be like if you bought a luxury car and as you're driving down the road, your nav system pops off and says, oh, hey, you know, there, you can get 2.99 fries down at McDonald's, uh, you know, three miles away. Would you like me to punch in the directions? No, that is unacceptable. The weather app has them, the, the music app has them, all these apps have them. And while I don't main, mainly use those apps, the fact that they're there in the first place is unacceptable. And I looked it up online and apparently there are settings you can use to turn them off, but the ads keep coming back. And then other people are saying, you can, you can root your phone or just don't use those apps. And those things are unacceptable to a phone at this price point, right? Because they're using those ads to make more money off of me after I've already purchased the phone. And I'm, I'm sorry, that is just unacceptable by any metric there is no excuse if you're going to use ads and that means you're you're getting extra income so you can subsidize the phone and if you can subsidize the phone then i should be getting it for less and don't tell me that the phone is incredibly expensive because it's not the materials that it's made out of yeah those materials don't feel premium the way an iphone does i know it says it's made out of glass but it scratches and the back feels kind of plasticky i don't know there's just something about it it looks luxury and to a degree it feels luxury but it doesn't have that mass, it doesn't have that presence, it doesn't have that existence in my hand that really makes it feel top tier. So the phone is not that expensive to make, at least relative to an iPhone. Maybe I need to look it up, maybe I'm just ignorant. If you think I'm wrong, you know, throw, throw a comment down below. I, I'd love to talk with you more about it because I, I don't understand. I'm, I'm new to the whole Android thing for the most part and, and using an Android phone as a daily driver has not been something that I've had long-term experience with. And this, this to me is just not okay, especially with a phone that is this, spectacular but pulling away from that i can honestly say my day-to-day -day experiences with the note 10 have been uh, I, I mean they're great right it's uh it's got great performance it's got 12 gigs of ram i've never seen it chug i've never seen it lag it's got lots of cool little nuanced things lots of gimmicks uh especially the s pen right the s pen I mean, it's fine. You can pull it out. You can take notes right on the screen without even unlocking the phone. You can use it in multiple different apps, but the execution is kind of poor. The response is really good. I, I am a big fan um, of how responsive the pen feels. You know, you can draw and you can do stuff like that, but it has all like these other, you know, like take a picture with it and wave it around and have other people, you know, use their pen on your phone, which that sounds, well, that sounds really dirty. Otherwise, I don't find the, the S Pen to be... You know, super important to the experience of the note. And I'm sure there's lots of other people who would disagree with me. I can totally see if you're doing a lot of like marking up of documents and stuff that the pen would be an incredibly useful thing. But for someone like me, mm, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's all right. It's, it's fair. I, I have used it occasionally, you know, moving on to some of the other stuff. Uh, it has these beautiful tapered edges and consuming content like YouTube videos and movies and stuff is is excellent there's a speaker under the screen which i'm totally for to get the stereo uh sound it does make the phone vibrate a whole bunch 
but I don't know, I, I've never really found it to be a problem. The phone's loud, sound quality is fine. Um, holding the phone though, when you're watching content, the edge detection is not good. I'm constantly putting in faulty inputs and I have to hold it at like weird angles and stuff in order to, to stop those inputs from happening. So, you know, Samsung, I, I've heard you fix it on the Note 20, so, you know, good job there, but yeah, not, not so good this time. So moving around to the back of the phone, you know, it's got the triple cameras here, it's got a wide, it's got a, a standard and it's got a zoom. Um, I would say the pictures are fair. I'm not the biggest fan of how the Samsung software oversaturates and does a lot of this extra post-processing stuff. Apple's been doing this for a while too and I'm not the biggest fan of it, but when comparing the two, I prefer the more true to life, true to the moment look of the iPhone relative to the Samsung phone. However, the one thing that the Samsung phone, that the Note 10 does not do well is shoot video, or at least in my experience, it has not done well. So I record a weekly podcast. You can find the link here. So we did episode one. I'm gonna put some footage up right here with using Note 10. So uh, it's me and my buddy Joe. We do the show every single week. And for the first episode, we were doing a segment on Apple and their WWDC. So initially we wanted to use iPhones to do the recording. But since we were talking about Apple, we thought that we might need to use our phones for, uh, you know, while we were in the middle of the show. And as you can see from this footage, it is not good. It's ultra saturated or like the exposure's off. It's, it's, it's constantly kicking in and out of focus. It's not a good experience. And both phones did this, right? Cause he has the exact same phone. Joey has the, has the exact same phone I do. And so now here's some footage from some of, uh, from the episode right after episode two and we used the iphones and you can see there's a huge difference the and the only thing that's different besides our positions on this uh on the on the show itself is um that we're using iphones the lighting is the same everything else is the same and so for whatever reason this phone when it comes to taking video is atrocious so i have not taken a lot of video with it and I can say, you know, all right, it's unfair because phones probably aren't tested to take hour long, you know, hour and a half long videos. But then it does some other stuff that's not quite wonderful. So if you're not familiar with taking long video or using DSLRs to record video, uh, one of the things that it'll do is it'll take your movie file. And once it hits a certain size, it'll break it up into different pieces. And that's fine. You can recombine it in editing and stuff like that. And that, that's not the biggest deal. A huge problem is, though, that this phone also, the Note 10, also does that exact same thing. However, when it goes from file to file, two or three frames gets kicked out, right? So if you're using a separate audio recorder, you've got to sync that audio up. If you put all of your movie files, you know, piece, 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 and then you put your audio on there, it's going to slowly desync as those frame drops between file to file get kicked out. So I don't know what that is. I've never seen a device do that before. It's really strange and it's really weird. And I'm not a, a big fan of using this phone for video. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's Android, right? There's nothing truly spectacular or unique here. What, the biggest thing is the way that it looks. And Samsung, I, I, got, I, I got to applaud you. Great job with the look of this phone. It is just... It's beautiful. Everything about it is is spectacular and it's excellent. And I, you know what? When I do, when it is time to upgrade this phone, um, that holds me to a new standard. As long as the Note line continues to um, hit that hit that echelon of luxury, I'm all for it. You know, I will I'll, I'll continue to to look at the Note before I look at anything else. But the ads, the ads have got to go. The ads have got to stop. The ads make it so I can't even really truly recommend this to anyone as as a daily driver phone because. I know what it is that you're doing with using ads and sending me, you know, Royal Caribbean cruises whenever I'm looking up the weather, but other people might not. And, and, and that, that's a problem. That's a problem. Shame on you. But otherwise, you know what? It's, it's been a wonderful phone. I use it all the time. Uh, I use it for helping manage this channel and manage all the other channels that I got. You can, again, you can find um, a lot of the other information down below in the descriptions. If you're, if you're interested in any of my other content and yeah, I mean, that's about it for this one, guys. You know, I really hope you enjoyed it. I am a new Android user, so so go easy on me, but, you know, throw your comments down below. Now, I want to hear more. I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, I want to get into a discussion. I want to find out, you know, are there things about the phone that I don't know about? Are there things that I could be doing that, you know, I haven't been doing? And, you know, come on, teach me, guys. I, I want to hear from you. So, um, you know, definitely be sure to, to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. You know, dislike it if you dislike it, and then let me know why you disliked it. You know, all that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and and uh, as always, take it easy.